This next topic is going to be a brief introduction and overview of one of our most commonly used professional stress tools, which is the section cut. I'm Charlie Cahill. I'm the manager of customer development here at Collier Aerospace. Development of customers, meaning find new customers, and also customer development as in making sure users like yourselves develop into, you know, power users of the software using things, you know, like our help system, our ticketing system, and that kind of thing. I'm also though an aerospace engineer by trade, and that's the hat I'm gonna be wearing as I'm introducing this feature to you. Just a quick overview of what I'll be presenting today. So first, an introduction of section cuts. What are they? Why should I care? And then I'll flip over to HyperX and I'll give a live demonstration. So there you'll see me create a section cut and review all of the different section cut capabilities real time. And then I'm gonna use the section cuts created to interrogate the model, understanding the different loads and stiffnesses that exist in my existing model. And I'll also size a given bay to meet a bay level stiffness requirement. From there, I'll flip back to my slide deck here and I'll present on a couple of different practical applications, other ways we've seen our customers use this tool. And then I'll hopefully end the presentation by inspiring you guys by explaining to you what we're doing to further progress this tool to make it that much more useful to our customers. So first and foremost, what are section cuts? Section cuts are user-defined cut planes that bisect your FEM elements. So you're physically clicking a plane in the software and at that plane, HyperX is going to be able to calculate the beam level stiffness property and loads. So the idea is you're taking a complex FEM, so something like the wing I'm showing here that has external FEA loads and elements that are pointing to all different kinds of property cards. Maybe you even have stiffness requirements that are coming from your aerodynamics team. And HyperX takes all of that information and allows you to visualize and perform sizing on these different cut planes so that you can kind of understand your system as something more familiar to you, something more digestible. So in this case, we're gonna be looking at a wing like the one I have shown here. And you're gonna notice that we're gonna be able to think about it as a cantilevered beam. So here is the model that we're going to be looking at. You can see we already have weights here in our structures tree, indicating that we already have sizing results. Just to re-familiarize ourselves here, those sizing results are going to be to each of these 10 load cases, six of which are traditional flight cases, things like cruise, hover, gust, and so on. And then we also have four different scenarios for motor failure, one for each of the included motors. And just real quick, I'll plot the properties so that we can see what we're sizing to here. So you can see my skins are honeycomb sandwich, this Hexel 3.1 PCF sandwiches. My caps are solid laminate and my substructure shear webs are also solid laminate. So first things first, we're talking about section cuts. So I'm going to create a section cut. On the structures tree, the section cut operations live at the far right end of the ribbon. So I'll click create section cut. It'll bring up my section cut creation form. I'll go ahead and reorient my model so I can do this a little bit easier. And now all I need to do is draw a cut plane right here in the middle of my bay of interest. So let's say that's bay six. I click apply. You can see HyperX was able to extract the cross section. It also knows the center of gravity, the neutral axis, and the shear center. You can toggle those on and off there in your, in your viewport. These properties are shown here in the calculated properties window. You can see that based on the aggregate of the sizing results that already exist on the zones that are being bisected by this cut plane here, we have a particular horizontal stiffness, vertical stiffness, GJ, all these different properties. For each cut, we can also take a look at what we call the load dependent properties. So for each design case, you can see all 10 of my design cases here in the dropdown. At each reference point and factor, 
HyperX is calculating the axial force, the horizontal shear, vertical shear, torque, and horizontal and vertical moments for every single design case. And you can see those values update accordingly as I change each case. If I wanted to size with these loads, with these section level forces, what I could do is I could use this button up here to automatically apply these section loads to a load property to give us something to physically drag onto our zones to size to. That's not something I'm gonna touch on in my demo today, but uh, it is something that we'll touch on later on in the presentation. Also on the list of things you can do with section cuts are enforcing stiffness constraints. So I mentioned early on that we have a table of stiffness requirements, one stiffness value for each bay. We can enforce those constraints here in the min stiffness options. You'll notice that we also have inputs for the location for your principal angle, as well as the location of your shear center and neutral axis on both the horizontal and vertical plane. So those are the benefits, those are the things that we're getting at, from the software at each section cut. Now what I would wanna do is I would create a section cut for each bay, which I've already done here to save us a little bit of time. Let me turn these on. And now you can see each bay has a particular section cut. These section cuts work a lot like the other entities in our tree, where every time I click them, they become highlighted. And now what I want to do is I want to use these section cuts to interrogate my model. So to help me as the engineer understand the loads and the existing stiffnesses within this model. So what I'll do is I'll use the tree to select all of my section cuts and I'll open up the watch window. Now in the watch window, what I can do is I can plot all of the different components of load for my section cuts. So I'll go to section cut loads. And now you can see that for each of my load cases, I can select to tabulate all of the different load components here. Now recall, I mentioned that I had a couple of different motor out cases. You know, as an engineer, I'm aware that that's probably gonna cause some torque on my wing. Maybe I wanna investigate how the torque varies between each of those cases. So we'll go ahead and pull the torque for the cruise case just as a kind of a control. So we'll say torque and we'll click app. You can see it populates in the watch window there. And we'll also do that for each of our four motor failure cases. So forward inboard, add, aft inboard, forward outboard, and aft outboard. So now all of that information is tabulated per bay in my watch window. I'll go ahead and lock this. So now what I want to do is I want to plot this information. So if I open up the plot, a format here, I want to turn all of these into lines so that they're easier understood. So the first couple of lines you can see are my cruise. So you can see I have barely any torque for my cruise case here. Turn that on and off to indicate to you which ones I'm talking about. And the ones that I'm currently plotting are the motor failure in the inboard cases. So one forward and one aft. And you can see, as we might expect, that they are equal and opposite of one another being applied at the same locations. And if I turn on my CAD here, we can better understand that location. Good orientation here without distracting from the watch window. Okay, there we go. So you can see starting at bay three, which is one, two, three, right here. This is the inboard motor. And as each one of them goes out, it has an equal and opposite reaction uh, on the wing. And now if I take a look at my outboard motor, which exists at the end of bay five, you can see a very similar trend. So now as an engineer, I feel a lot more comfortable about the loads that have been applied to my model. I understand what's going on and I've kind of been able to break them down into something digestible. And maybe I take a screenshot of this and save it to a PowerPoint of results or something like that to share with my team to show that I did my due diligence to, you know, to understand the model and show that the, the loads are properly applied. So now what I might wanna look at is my section stiffnesses. So I'll turn off the CAD here and now remember, we had that section stiffness requirement table for each bay. If I open up 
a single section cut, you can see I can use that EI input variable in order to input the stiffness for each bay. And I can do that you know, each of six times, or I can use our section cut table. So I'll just select all of my section cuts, right click, open the section cut settings table, and then I'll just go back to my slides and I'll copy these requirements, one per each bay you see here, into my section cut spreadsheet table. So now that those have been enforced, I want to see how each of those compares to my existing sizing results to better understand you know, where I stand starting from here. So I'll open up the watch window again. And now instead of the loads, what we wanna plot is the stiffnesses. So from analysis results, I'll go to inputs, stiffness constraints, EI horizontal. Now these are the stiffness constraints I just enforced. And then I'll take a look at my existing properties in my section cut. So my EI one in the horizontal for every bay. So now you can see I'm tabulating my required stiffness by the actual stiffness, which again is an aggregate of the stiffness of all of the elements based on the sizing results. So based on the fact that my skins are sandwiches, my spar webs are solid laminate, and my spar caps are solid laminate. Now, the sizing did not include these requirements. I obviously just added them, but just to keep that in mind. So now if I open up the plotting feature again, I can compare these required stiffnesses with my existing. So let me turn the required one into a line, sort of like we had it on the previous slide. Uh, so the idea would be towards the root of the wing in bay one, where there are higher loads, the zones are already going to be stiffer in order to handle the higher loading seen in that area. But as you proceed down the length of the wing, the zones actually soften because there's less loads there to require them to size up. So what we're seeing from bays four through six towards the tip of the wing is that we're not meeting our section requirements and we're pretty far away here on this bay four. So let's focus on that. So again, this is bay four. So what I can do is I can go back to my watch window and say, okay, which one of these is bay four? Use that interactivity from the viewport to understand which section cut I'm dealing with. And then I'm gonna make a set of just the zones in bay four that are contributing to that bay four stiffness. So I'll say create set. I'll go ahead and close my watch window. And now I'm gonna show only this bay four set. So this is the bay I'm focusing on. And if I open up my section cut window here, you can see I have a constraint of eight e to the eighth pounds per inches square. And I'm gonna use the lighter or more targeted zone stiffness distribution. I'll talk more about what that means in a second. My existing property is 6.47. So this is our starting point. This is our target. We're gonna go ahead and apply. Now what we need to do is we need to tell HyperX to size for that target, to compare our existing stiffness with the one we're trying to meet. So what we'll do is we'll go to our analysis properties. And let's say in this case, as an engineer, we know that we really only want to size the spar caps here. We want to thicken up the spar caps to take on that extra stiffness and not add any weight into our panels if we can. So let's just do the spar cap analysis property. And what I'll do is I'll create a new failure mode for stiffness, section requirements. And what I wanna do is enable the stiffness requirements here. So what's gonna happen is HyperX is going to break down the required bay level stiffness into individual zone stiffness requirements. And this failure mode is saying, compare that stiffness requirement to the actual stiffness of the beam that I'm getting from my sizing operations. And don't, and only return a result that attains positive margin or meets that stiffness requirement. So I will apply this and I'll close. And now I will resize my bay. And you can pay attention to the weight up here in the tree, 21.24 to start. Okay, so immediately you can see that something has changed. We're, we now have a weight of 22.45. So 
that's about a what five or six percent increase in weight. And if I open up my section cut form, you can see I was able to meet my stiffness target almost exactly at 8.004. I can do is I will plot my controlling failure modes here from my analysis results. You can see that all of that stiffness is being applied into just these two beams here. So now if you think about it, applying all of that stiffness to just those two spar caps is likely not the most producible solution. It might be a little more producible if we try to, you know, thicken up the remainder of the spar caps as well, or at least more of the spar caps, spread that stiffness distribution throughout the section in order to have spar caps that are more similar in design for manufacture. So what I can do is I can enforce that using that slider bar I alluded to earlier. So on my constraints window, I'll slide from more targeted stiffness, which obviously produced a lighter result, all the way over to a more even stiffness distribution, which will likely return a heavier result, just to kind of bookend the problem and show off this capability. So I'll apply this and close, and I'll just quickly resize. Again, we're starting with 22.45 here. Okay, so now you can see we have a new weight, a little bit higher, maybe about 1% higher of 22.65 in the bay. And you can see the stiffness has been enforced to more of the zones throughout the cross section, two additional zones. So the idea being we're adding a little bit more weight by spreading out that stiffness, but it's likely much more producible. And if we check to make sure, we have a stiffness now of 8.23. So we overshot our target stiffness a little bit just by uh, trying to spread that stiffness out a little bit and get something a little more producible. But these are the trade-offs that you and your team can have when you use this slider bar capability. Okay, so that wraps up the live demo portion of this presentation. Hopefully you were able to get a more general understanding of the capability that we offer with the section cut tool. And now I wanna to talk to a few of the really cool applications that we've seen our customers use this tool for. So first, let's look at a supersonic wing. What the engineers were seeing in this wing were peaking stress loads in the middle of the wing rather than at the root, which is obviously something that they didn't expect. What the engineer was able to do was use our section cut tool to take incremental cuts along the length of the wing, just like we did in the example, by plotting the applied moment and the corresponding stiffness on the same plot against the spanwise direction, you're able to see that the slope of the applied moment, so this orange line here, is increasing at a higher rate than the slope of the stiffness line, the blue line here, and that's particularly happening in the middle of the bay. So when that happens, the compression within the wing is building up. The idea is this compression will not build up as much if those slopes are more similar, if, you know, thinking about MC over I. And you can kind of see that based on sort of the root and tip of the wing where the slopes are a little more similar, a little more balancing. So this is something that we wouldn't have fully understood if it wouldn't have been for this section cut tool. Another really neat application that we've seen is using these section loads for test actuator load generation. So the idea is Take this wind blade, for example. This wind blade has four different actuator locations, and the goal is for the vertical shear enforced by those actuators to induce a bending moment that matches what we're seeing in the FEM so that we can accurately test the part for what we predicted. So we created section cuts at each of the four actuator locations and used the PVM loads to extract the target bending moment, and then use that target bending moment to back out a corresponding vertical shear load to enforce by the actuator. And you can see by the plots here how well that worked. And last but not least, let's talk about what we're doing to this tool to continue to improve it. What's, what's coming down the pipeline for this tool? So in this case, we're talking about an automated spar analysis using section cut loads. So to put us all on the same page here, a traditional SPAR analysis requires section loads, and these section loads typically account for the loads in the SPAR webs, the SPAR caps, 
and some of the skin elements on either side of those spar caps on the top and the bottom. All of these loads are considered built up beam loads in a traditional stress analysis sense. Using the section cut loads, you're able to do things like column analysis, crippling, plastic bending, all of these methods that HyperX already offers on a section level. So the idea is to take our section cut tool and automate a process like this, something that a typical stress analysis or stress engineer is liable to do or wants to be able to do. So this is what we've been working on. To kind of step through this here, if you take a look at our spar section in the bottom middle of the slide there, we have five different cuts along the length of the spar. Each one of those cuts is taking into account the loads and the stiffnesses from the skin, the spar caps, the spar webs, and then the bottom skin as well. The idea is from each of those cuts, so we're showing section cut one here in the image, from each of those cuts, we're extracting the free body diagram loads for each case, and we're using those loads, a design property that is representative of the section, and the various analysis methods that we need corresponding to an analysis property to size what we're calling a non-FEA zone, an idealized spar geometry, to those section level loads. And then once we get a sizing result, we can update the FEM properties accordingly to have the similar stiffness and properties that we want from that spar. So the idea is to take the free body section level loads to size all the properties along the length of the spar in this manner. We can already do this today, but it's a pretty manual process. So we're hoping to roll out a more automated version of this process to all of our stress engineers within the coming months.